So hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk to Experts Tuesday. On behalf of the Click community and Click Support, thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is Talk to Experts Tuesday, so it's a series that allows us here at Click to connect with all of you. So each session, as you know, we have a different topic with subject matter experts on the call. We will use this time to field your questions, share resources, and hopefully demonstrate a few things within the product. If you're new to the session, everyone is muted, so please use the Q&A panel below to ask your questions. We won't necessarily be responding back within the panel, as we're going to try to get to everyone's questions live today. So if we don't get to your question or it's something that may take some time to research, um, it will be posted in the community along with the recording. So we do an FAQ article that's in the community and then a blog post and then a Talk to Experts Tuesday post as well. So I'll show you guys where that all is located a little bit later. So please keep in mind that we will not be able to answer questions regarding a specific open case. And we also ask you to keep the questions related to the topic at hand. And one last thing, if you've hopped on just to hear your question answered and then plan to jump off, that's totally okay. You should get a survey about the session, so please feel free to fill that out if you have a minute afterwards. And if you're not prompted for a survey, please feel free to provide any and all feedback to digital at click.com. So today's session is on click alerting. Click alerting provides sophisticated data-driven alerts that help ClickSense users proactively monitor and manage their business. While we wait for all of you to get your questions in, I would like to introduce our panel for the day. With me, I have Nacho Vivian, Senior Software Engineer, Richard Byard, Senior Manager for R&D, and Kaiki Zanolo, sorry about that, Senior Manager of Product Management. So Nacho, can you please go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, thanks, Amy. So I'm the architect behind Click Alerting. Um, I joined as part of the acquisition of Rux AI back in January. And uh, so ever since we've been integrating the Click Alerting on Windows, as we've uh, renamed the, the, our product uh, after the acquisition, and also been involved in the development of this solution, also for the cloud version. Great, thank you. Richard? Hi, I'm Richard Bayard. I'm based in Dubai, so late it's in the evening for me. Um, oh. <laughs> so I manage the uh, alerting team, sort of the click alerting on Windows and for some components of, of alerting on cloud. Uh, and obviously, we've had an exciting year getting lots of products out with Click, so that's been really good. Uh, and looking forward to lots more. Perfect. Thank you, Richard, and thank you for joining us so late. <laughs> All right, Kaiki. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for uh, hosting the session, Jamie. Uh, so my name is Kaiki Zaniolo. I'm a senior product manager at Click. Been at Click at uh, well for almost eleven years now, uh, and and the product team for the past three years. Uh, uh, been part of the pre-sales and, and the Latin American team uh, for a long time. Uh, yeah, so been uh, so been involved since the acquisition of Rocks AI Ping Alerting. Uh, and, and, and branding that as click alerting is also um, um, uh, as participating the, actively in the, um, the rollout of the alerting capabilities on SaaS. So uh, thank you for joining and, and it's, it's a pleasure to be here and, and, and talk to you guys today. Perfect, thank you so much. All right, and so my name is Jamie Gregory. Um, I'm a technical support engineer here at Click. I've been with Click for three years now and I've primarily focused um, and ClickSense and ClickSense Cloud or ClickSense Business, as you guys all know it. And then recently, actually this year, transitioned to our digital support team. So you guys probably see me out in the community a lot. Um, I write the support updates blog, which I'll probably show you guys a little bit later in the session. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and just get started. Let's just jump in right into the questions. All right, let me see. First question. Sorry, just one second. All right, so are there any plans to integrate click alerting into ClickSense similar to what Click has done with InsightBot? Um, so I assume this question is about click alerting the on-premise and Windows uh, product. So no, we don't have any plans uh, currently to do that integration similar to what we did with the InsightBot. 
so uh, it remains a value-added product, uh, one that integrates with Plexens, but it's installed and maintained uh, separately. So there are no plan, no current plans for that right now. I just want to uh, um, take the opportunity to say that these uh, capabilities of alerting are fully integrated and part of the ClickSense experience uh, on, on the SaaS platform. So uh, if, if, you, if you need something more integrated, uh, looking at SaaS could be an opportunity for you, for you there. That's great, thank you. All right, and uh, what kind of data alerts can I set up with click alerting? Well, uh, so, um, so data alerts are, are, you can set up uh, basically their evaluations of a ClickSense application. So uh, with click alerting, you have the option of creating data alerts. You also have the option of creating system alerts and you also have broadcast alerts. So the, the question was specifically around data alerts. Data alerts are uh, monitoring changes in the data model of one uh, ClickSense application. So basically you could use measures and dimensions and put a condition that is going to be evaluated uh, on a schedule or every time the application is reloaded. And um, we have, so we're, we're going to, uh, Jamie, I think we can, we can give them uh, some uh, documentation afterwards, but we can provide you a link on the help page with all the different types of data alerts that you can create. Uh, if, you, if you visit our help and look for click alerts, and there's a specific area there for data alerts that covers every single one of them. Okay, I think I have that link. So let me, I can post it in the chat for everyone right now, if I can. I have it at hand, I can do that for you. Okay, perfect. All right, so we'll put that Thank link you. in the chat for everyone. Um, and if you have any specific questions about any of the kind of alerts or how to set them up, just let us know while we're on the call and we're happy to help with that. Right. I was just going to add to that. Sure. that uh, so that the different data alerts are really focused around either you're looking at single value in effect, of, you know, no dimension split in effect of your data, or you're looking at a table of data that's split by a dimension. But the, you know, the actual validation against that, the conditions that are run against that alert, then will return either a true false if there's no dimension or the true values if there is a dimension. So that's where it adds a lot of power and it's really then about the conditions that you can set to enable lots more after that to, for the smarts really in that. Perfect, great. Uh, let's see, so we have uh, some more questions coming in. Um, this one's a little bit more technical. Uh, every upgrade we do on Click Alerting, at least half of the services are removed to post a successful install. This requires us to follow the help documentation to run a script to remove services, then run the install again. Is there an update as to when this issue will be resolved, or is there not a or is there a way to not run into this issue? I can I can almost tell who's asking the question. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, we um, uh, yeah we do have plans to to address that uh, uh, in the future, but there, the, so when that happens. Uh, we do have documentation on the help on how to uh, to mitigate that and solve the problem. And, and according to our uh, uh, feedback that we're getting, uh, following the steps fix the problem. So we don't have any problems after people following the steps when this happens. But we do have uh, the intention just to tie that up a little bit more and, and, and fix that. Perfect. That's great. Yeah. All right. And so are there, are there plans to open the API up to clients and partners similar to what Click has done for Sense and, and Printing? Uh, having done a number of demos lately, one of the biggest complaints is that alerting does not use AD groups, nor does it allow, us, allow for us to add people to groups in alerted in an automated way. Um, okay, so multiple part question. Um, uh, APIs, yes, uh, we, uh, the APIs are actually there. They're just not properly documented and, and, and supported. So, but uh, we're, we're looking into uh, what is like the possibilities of, of doing that there. I, I just want to say like, uh, and we keep talking about alerting on on-premise or, or SaaS, but on the SaaS platform, the APIs are, are there fully supported, fully, um, not yet fully documented, but in the process of releasing the documentation for our SaaS uh, um, capabilities uh, on the alerting part. 
Um, so the other part of the question was about the AD groups. So we know this is a limitation on, on alerting today and click alerting today uh, as, as the, uh, it, it's the one reason, well, I don't know, Rich, you wanna cover that actually? <laughs> Um, kind of you want. It's, yeah, not so it's one of the big sort of areas, obviously, on groups. Well, AD groups, that's, there's two different parts to that. So one is the actual syncing with AD and then being able to obviously have single sign-on, which I assume is probably what that is related to. Uh, the other piece is then, you know, how do we enable use a sort of setup of groups for an alert so that that enables, obviously we have groups built into the product where you manage it yourselves and, and through the APIs, you'd be able to obviously adjust those sort of more in a more automated way. So that, that's certainly possible now on the Windows product. Uh, whether we would you know, sync with AD groups specifically, we've discussed that as an option, uh, but we haven't yet progressed on that, partly because some AD groups could have hundreds of thousands of recipients. And so you get into some edge use cases that probably aren't the most sensible. So uh, that's the one thing we're, we're evaluating as we move forward with that. Mm. Uh, I would add also that probably if, I mean, as we are looking into this AD groups, um, the plan or what we are discussing so far is more into uh, just kind of like relying completely on AD groups. So our groups would, we would drop our groups because we would always reuse those instead of syncing probably, but. We'll see. Yeah, but like bottom line is like something we're looking uh, into, uh, but not something that we can commit or something that we can give you any any uh, timeline of delivery for that. Perfect. All right, thanks guys. Sounds like more to come on that. Uh, let's see. Are there plans to allow alerts to include chart objects? We want to send an alert based on data with a link as well as the image of an object to make the alert more meaningful. Not all recipients uh, actually want to go into Click Sense. Oh, that's sad to hear. Uh, I love all recipients going back to Sense. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no, so we do have, so th that's a dedicated one. Uh, and, and the reason I say this is uh, if I start giving you an alert, which is designed and meant to be a bite-sized notification, something that tells you something happened, here's a, a snippet of that, and you can go there and check it out uh, and, and, and investigate. So that was the reason behind all the designs and everything we did was we wanted that to be a actionable bite-sized notification, right? Uh, sending detailed information uh, uh, is that still an alert or does that become a report? Mm -hmm. So we do have a full report roadmap uh, uh, and, and that is partially covering, uh, going to be covered there. So we don't, we don't want to do too much when it comes to alerting, but we of course want to integrate alerting with other parts of, of the product and reporting is definitely one that we're looking into. So the, that's a very long answer to say, maybe. Uh, we just don't know exactly how we're going to solve this yet. And we're constantly like taking feedback and understanding what is needed there. So uh, I would like to take this as an opportunity to remind you we have um, uh, on Click Community, we have the product idea uh, uh, section that you can go there and you can post your ideas. I'm constantly monitoring those ideas uh, and feedback that we received and, and we shape the roadmap to be able to address uh, that. and 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 other uh, requirements that we get. Perfect. Yeah, um, I'll go ahead and share my screen and just kind of show everyone uh, where that is, where they can go. All right, can you guys see? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. So I'm on community.click.com. Um, if I go down here to product insights and ideas, there will be an ideas section here. If you see like ideas internal only, let us know. That's, that's only for the you. Case. <laughs> that's only for you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can come here, you can search uh, all the ideas. Um, you can also filter them out and everything like that. Um, you can take a look at I, like some of the hot ideas, top ideas, 
if you haven't been here before, you definitely want to come check it out just because there might be something in here that um, maybe you've always kind of thought of, oh, that would be cool to have, but you weren't really sure where to go or if it would be maybe a good idea. You can come here and check them out. Um, you, you can comment on the ideas that kind of uh, lifts them up in value, if you will. You can like them. Um, and then if you don't see your idea here, you can definitely just enter in your idea. So just search or do suggest an idea and uh, you can enter in your idea. They are evaluated by our product management team. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe it's biweekly or every couple of weeks. Um, so they do come in, they do monitor and they do communicate back on this platform about the ideas and where they're going with them. Since we're in here, I'll just show you guys really quick where everything else is too. Um, if we go to support programs and then uh, support knowledge base, this is the uh, knowledge base out here in the Click community. Um, if you search just for FAQ, pretty easy search, you'll get quite a few hits, but you will see um, like the Talk to Experts Tuesday sessions pretty, pretty quickly and up towards the top. So we will have our click alerting FAQ. So you can always come here and just search FAQ or click alerting FAQ and that will post. So everything that gets asked today will be um, compiled into the FAQ posted here in the click community. Um, and then we also do the support updates blog. So I will blog about it when we have everything together, the recording and everything like that. You will see a blog, a blog here in the support updates blog. Um, and then the last one is this Talk to Experts Tuesday section. Um, this is where we do post the previous recordings and it also has the current like upcoming events as well. Um, so the next session is on ClickView. Uh, but under here under past events, you will see the previous sessions with the recording and the transcript. So just wanna throw that out there for everybody. So you guys know where all that is now. Um, all right, let's see, let's get back to the questions. All right. Are there um, any plans to support more dimensions at the moment to create an alert? Um, so no, so like, no, we don't have any plans. And the reason is this was done by design. So um, that's, it goes, goes and like hand to hand with the other uh, one that I, that I talked about where if you add more dimensions to an alert, it doesn't become that bite size notification. It becomes a fully complex set of data that is a report instead of an alert. So uh, we want this to, to, to be able to provide you the, um, the possibility of just receiving that bite size notification and taking action on that. And so by design, we, we limited this by, uh, by one dimension to be, uh, to be able to look through the values and, and, and create the alert. Um, you do have options though, uh, to add one dimension, a different selection and a condition to be able to uh, accommodate some of the more complex uh, evaluations that you need. Uh, so you, you gotta explore those, um, this, this uh, um, three legs stool here. You can, you, can, you can do things in a different way that you can achieve a lot actually, uh, even though you have one dimension uh, as a limitation for the alert. But again, this is done by design, uh, and 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 there's a technical side of it. I don't know if you want to cover that as well, Nacho, in terms of. Uh, I mean, I can try to explain it uh, very simply. So basically, if you have more than one dimension, what you're going to do is you're going to cross all the possible um, combinations of those dimensions. So that can be that can get pretty ugly quite easily. So it's not, it's by definition, it's preferable to pick one uh, where you know and you can predict very easily what, how many rows you're going to have. Uh, so therefore the definition of that condition and that alert is going to be easier to control. Not only control, but also to read and understand, right? Yeah. So I think the, 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 this was, uh, <laughs> there, there are two sides. So one is the, the technical side of making this happen. The other one is a human consuming that um, needs to be able to understand and get this quick uh, um, insight from an alert. So we don't want people to investigate the result of an alert. We want them to see, take a look, five seconds, they understand what's going on. 
or they have a good idea. If they don't, they can jump back to the application and understand more. In, in fact, so just in, technically, it's not a, a, just a matter of uh, we want to control what we are asking uh, yeah. the table to be, really. Yeah. So I really, yeah, just to add, it's like the integrity of the data is dictated by that one dimension of multiple measures. If you add a second measure in, it's really up to the user whether that makes sense or not. And that often won't. And that's where we can get into issues. Now, uh, sort of roadmap items or future ideation items, certainly things like being able to loop an alert by a second dimension, those kind of possibilities are certainly there. You know, if sort of raise them on the ideation or ideas site that's there and sort of get those get the message back, I guess, the feedback back to Kaiki on, on that, because there are certainly options of being able to chain all alerts and even and cycle through alerts by that second dimension. So the integrity of the actual alert remains, but you're cycling it by a second dimension to get more value and, and sort of more perhaps alert messages come to you that you really need to know about. So that would add depth, but isn't necessarily you know, it's already about getting the ideas out there, I guess, in that side so that Kaiki can then sort of act on that in terms of the roadmap. I think that would be my suggestion on it. Make your voice heard, really. Yeah. Yes, all about the make your voice heard. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, so you guys have um, this question. You guys have already kind of been talking a little bit like we're this is on ClickSense. Windows and this is on SAS. Um, can you someone explain the differences between alerting for ClickSense Enterprise um, Windows versus SAS? Um, yeah, so I, I think it's uh, maybe it's a good opportunity to do a quick demo uh, if yeah. we can, Jamie. That'd be yeah. great. Okay. Um, so just please confirm you can see ClickSense Hub. Yes, I can see. Perfect. Uh, so. Uh, this is um, this is our SaaS version of Flixen. So there's so the difference. And before I jump into the demo, I just want to cover a little bit in terms of what the difference is. So on Click uh, Sense Enterprise uh, Client Manage, which is our Windows on-premise uh, product, um, Click Alerting is a value-added product that you license and you install uh, separately to uh, the installation of ClickSense uh, Enterprise. And then you integrate those two um, products in a way that you can create the alerts and you have an extension that you could use instead of ClickSense, uh, the client, to be able to do self-service creation of alerts. Uh, Click Alerting also has a, um, a web interface for people to manage or even create and modify their alerts. So what we did was we um, collecting feedback from people and understanding a, a deeper integration is required. When we were porting some of the alerting capabilities to SaaS, we integrated that as part of the product, as part of a, a single uh, uh, user uh, workflow in, in, inside of the, inside of the platform. So basically, um, if you if you're inside of a, a ClickSense uh, um, hub, you have your applications. I'm going to open uh, this uh, application here, which is going to take me to the client itself. So here now I have an application where I have multiple charts and, and, and this application, if I right click one of those charts, so I'm going to do um, this on this one over here, you see that the, on the context menu here, I have the create alert option. So when I select that, I am presented with a model here uh, uh, with a dialog that allows me to create this alert. So my alert could be, okay, sales KPI monitoring this is the name of my alert. This could be whatever. You can tap a description here. You don't have to, you can leave that blank. Uh, the next section here is to be able to add data to my alert. So it asks me to add a measure. So if I click here, because I started uh, on this visualization here, it's going to tell me from the chart, sales KPI, which is the one that you started, there is one measure for you to pick. If, you, if you're not doing this, you can pick any of the other master uh, uh, measures they have available. So basically an alert can, can be initiated uh, from a chart, but it's not directly linked to the chart. The alert is actually linked to the application and the data model of the application and not the chart itself. That means that if you make changes to this chart, your alert is going to remain the same because they're different entities. The, the chart is just a starting point. So if I select here uh, the measure for my uh, alert, so I get here the um, number there, I can refine my alert and say, 
um, that I want to show my alert by a dimension. So basically here I have the option of selecting something. So for example, if I go here and say segment, now my alert has all the three different segments that I have in my data set. And now the number of the alerts uh, of the measure actually here is, is broken down by those, uh, those values. So uh, I also have the option of using the current selections that I have in the app, or I can apply or I can force no selections. For example, it could be, could be in a state that I do have selections when I started, but I wanna force no selections, or I can even go and say, well, that's, that's okay, but I want to just like uh, furniture is a bookmark that I have. If I apply that, that applies a selection and now I have my alert based on that. So basically uh, going next, you can create your, uh, condi your conditions for the alert. Here I have the option of uh, selecting my measures or my dimensions and applying a set of, uh, of conditions to be checked when we evaluate the alert. So if I select sales here, for example, I have the options of comparing that to a value. So that's a manual added value here. There could be something that you type or it could be even a, an expression that you use uh, to evaluate the alert. So basically with that, I can, I, can, I can use something specific. So for example, if I say here 300,000, uh, that's going to uh, filter my alert. It's going to show me only one row because the other ones are not greater than that. Uh, I also have the option of, um, comparing that with the measure. So for example, if I have another measure on my alert, which I, I don't at the moment, I don't have one, um, I can say compare that. So that could be sales against uh, quota or, or something that you have there uh, or cost or something that you can compare two measures. Uh, or, or you can even compare it with the current set. So you can say, okay, sales has to be greater than what? The average. So that's going to calculate the average of all the roles and it's only going to give you the alert based on the ones that are greater than the average. So you have a few options here that you could do the standard deviation, you can do minimum, max, or percentile. Uh, then you can offset that if you need to, and you can set that as, as a percentage. You can also add uh, that a condition. So you can add another condition to your alert and, and, and choose how they're, we're going to evaluate that. If it's going to be this one and this one, or this one, or this second one. So, uh, and then the next phase here of the alert is um, you can control the frequency of how uh, often you're going to receive the alert. If you don't touch anything, the standard configuration that we give you is always. It means that every time you reload the application, you're going to receive a notification of, um, of the alert if it triggers. So if your condition is met, always we're going to give you that. Um, if you happen to reload the application way too often and you want to um, reduce the number of notifications you have, you can use one of the options here, like once per hour, once per day, once per week or per month. That's going to give you a notification of the first occurrence during that period. And, and then it's going to ignore all the other notifications. Even though we continue to evaluate, we continue to log history of that, we just don't tell you that something happened. That's for control of notification. And if you uh, have a professional license, you can come here and share this alert with other people. So that means that if you don't have, if you have an analyzer license, that option is not even going to be available because you can only do self-service alerts. So you can create alerts for yourself. If you have a professional license here, you can come and say you want to add somebody here and you go and then you add somebody like Mike Trollo. Uh, you add Mike Trollo to my alert. And now if I create the alert, he's going to be a recipient of my alert because this is actually linked to his email. I'm not going to do this. Otherwise we're going to start seeing messages here on my screen saying, well, what's going on? Uh, so I, I create the alert. So now the alert is created. You get a Tils notification here telling you that you created an alert. If you jump there to see the alerts that you have, I actually had a few that I created before. And you have here a way to monitor all your alerts. So um, you can get uh, to this page from the client when you create the alert. But also if you are here in your hub, you can always go to your uh, profile and you see alerts as an option there and now you see all your alerts and then if you click in one alert specifically you're going to see all the metadata of when this was created or last time we evaluated I just created so there's no evaluation or triggering of this alert and you can always see as well the data and conditions that I have so sales segment uh, uh, sales has to be greater than the average and I uh, have a selection which is uh, set to only furniture uh, products. So you can see all of this, you can jump directly and see that in app, you can come uh, back to edit your alert from here as well. So here's a way for you to monitor that. Once you have executions of the alert, so for example, 
if I um, if I click in one of the others that I have here, so let me choose click this one. This one I have a history, so I executed this alert a few times. You see all the past executions of that alert. You see the evaluations, and you can click, and you can see exactly how that uh, alert behaves. You also are going to start getting your alerts in the notification uh, center here in the hub. So basically, you receive a notification of your alert, and then your alerts there, and you can see it. So let's go ahead, and I can. I'm going to manually uh, trigger this one, the sales KPI monitoring. I'm going to choose here because I am the owner of the alert. I'm going to say evaluate now. So that's now checking my alert. And if everything goes well, I receive a notification saying sales KPI monitoring has triggered one value. And if I click there uh, to view the alert, you're going to see that I created the alert. Sales management was my app. You see the condition, you see furniture as selection, and you see the one value that, that I selected. If you want to go back to the application and investigate more, you have two options. You can go to individual dimension values by clicking on the link that you have here, or you can view an app which is going to apply the selection for furniture. The difference here is if I click on the customer here, it's going to apply that selection as well. So now I go and when I land in the application, I have furniture and customer selected. So you can continue your investigation directly into um, uh, the details here that are available in the application. So this demo here was a quick demo of SaaS. So that's the capabilities that we have on SaaS. So you're going to say, okay, well, you don't have a bunch of the other, like for example, uh, system alerts and things like that. So one thing is uh, on SaaS, we're actually labeling alerts for the data events. So data alerts, it's what I actually we're calling alerts. You also have here uh, under settings, you have your notifications. So for notifications, a lot of the stuff that you expect to be a system alert are under notifications. So you can have, for example, a notification when the, an application is successfully reloaded, or if it fails to reload, you have also some space notifications and we're adding uh, more notifications here uh, to this list. Uh, and we're also going to add a few different transport types of where you, um, you, you can receive those notifications. So the combination of notification and alerts is how we uh, address the use cases of alerting on SAS. Now, the differences is like in Windows, as I said, like you have the, all, all the whole uh, uh, experience is integrated with ClickSense, but it's a separate installed product that you uh, can enable. So I'm not sure, I don't know if you, um, if you have the Windows version there that you can do a quick demo. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll share my screen now. So I have, I have here the application that we usually use for the demos. So, um, well, it's just regular. And what we have here is the extension to create the to create alerts. So this is already uh, making the communication with the click alerting server, picking up my user and identifying me as a user. So I'm going to create a new alert here. I can add in this, a description, which is optional. And here I have uh, this area where I'm going to actually pick what's the data that I'm going to base the alert on. So I can filter by an object. So selecting an object um, to say like what's the measure or dimension I wanna use. So in this case, I'm gonna use sales revenue. So I can hear, I see here the different options of measures that I have. Otherwise, if I didn't pick up an object, we would see the master items. So I can pick up that measure and also I'm going to add a dimension uh, again, because I it's only picking up the dimensions filtered by the object. So I can clear and I can say, well, I want the color, which is one of the master dimensions. So now I'm going to base, uh, create my condition. So uh, by default, it's going to try to focus on the measure but because that's normally the case. So I'm going to say, well, the sales revenue greater than uh, let's say a hundred dollar. So then in here, I, can, I click next and I have a few options uh, just to complete my alert. Uh, I can select an existing bookmark uh, or I can select different frequencies of one, when I want to be notified or I can set different channels, so email or mobile. Uh, I'm gonna say only email in this case. So then I create the alert and that receives the, that, that communicates with click alert. And so now I'm, I can just like go to see that in detail. I uh, see how the information is populated here. It's trying to get a preview. So this is basically what we're getting. And perhaps I want to make this a bit more advanced. I'm going to say 
well, that probably NA is something I don't want to control. So I'm going to create another, an extra condition here saying that color not equal to NA and add this to the rule. Uh, this is a problem we were having, hold on a second. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is something that we have just fixed, but it's not going to work. So won't do that. Um, this is just a new policy by Chrome that we had to address in the latest one. Um, anyways, I, here's where I can change my conditions. Uh, so for example, I want to make this a bit higher. Uh, so I don't want to include some of this. So I'm going to just like make this 100,000 instead. So I can validate a condition and it, this will evaluate. It has filtered out something. Um, I see here a summary as well, the negative and positive. And I can continue setting up my alert and so on. So distribution, notification, different options that I have here. Uh, so then I could just click on next until I click save. And, and then I, that's the alert that we created. Yeah, so Jamie, this is basically like you saw here, click alerting. This is click alerting on premise. And the other one that I did is alerting on SAS. They're similar. Uh, and but uh, we aim for a different uh, user experience there uh, and um, on SAS. So that's kind of a, basically uh, the, the difference that we have there. That makes sense. Thank you guys for showing that. That was great. Uh, so kind of along those lines, um, and I have a feeling like this question is, is uh, in regards to like the different types of alerts. Um, we've spent a long time trying to position alerting by exception, meaning that simple trigger base alerts should not be the alert sent to senior management. It's okay for operations, especially um, as there is no end printing on SAS. Instead, expression-based conditional alerts should be used for execs that are time sensitive and impact the bottom line. I believe that complex expression based alerts can be delivered with quick alerting on SAS. That was a question. I didn't read it very well, but that was a question. <laughs> um, uh, it would be good to see a demo or two, which we kind of just did. Um, also, execs do not want to look at an app, they want to share the alert for a member of the operations team to do something. So hope this suggestion makes sense. Um, so basically, yeah, it's a, I'm trying to understand the entire question, uh, but basically, um, so the, 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 the way you can create the alerts are, I mean, alerts are condition-based uh, 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 events. So basically you're telling an engine to go there every time the data changes, uh, uh, check for this. So as you saw there, we have the opportunity of creating uh, a multi-step kind of, uh, of condition. So you can create this or that. Actually, we're, we're very soon going to introduce the ability to do this, then that as well. The difference is, is like, for example, on the SaaS platform, which is, I think the question was around SaaS. Uh, here's on the SaaS platform, the condition is almost like a wizard. So you don't have to create the condition as Nacho was doing like A and B, you create that visually. So, and we're improving, we're actually adding a, a few more capabilities of grouping things and doing this, then that, uh, and, and the conditions as well. So that's going to allow conditions to be created uh, for more complex scenarios for evaluations. And I think, uh, the question here was, okay, now if for operations, okay, they go there and they set an alert and that they get this. Now for an ex executive, so they would like to get this. Uh, I think it's, it relates to the other question. Okay, they want to get this plus something like a summary or, or, or something of sorts. So or basically, share it. exactly. So basically the first option is, well, yeah, you're going to receive the alert on your email account. So basically to share that or, or uh, are today the only option you have is okay you share you you just forward that email to somebody and say take action but we also have a roadmap of allowing uh, uh, a human to, to to take an action say okay now i received this and at the end of this what i need to do is actually create for example a service now ticket so uh, with that information so we want to integrate this with other uh, third-party tools to be able to start uh, become part of a workflow uh, uh, scenario as well 
Uh, an important thing here, we just um, uh, announced an acquisition of uh, Blender IO, which is a, um, uh, a platform as a service uh, uh, type of, of, of software that we are already in conversations with that group that uh, came with the acquisition and, and blending <laughs> uh, the roadmaps with Click and Blender. Uh, it's just like blending the roadmaps and making sure that we were addressing situations like this. But basically we expect to have um, not only actions that we can uh, preset and just wait for a human confirmation to happen, also like alert can start a, a, an action without any intervention as well. So we can just kick off a workflow somewhere else that's going to take the action. So uh, today the option to share is uh, you can put recipients to the alert. So you get the alert and other people get the alert as well. And then you can ask them, okay, now you got the alert. Have you taken any action? Or you can forward the email and say, I need you to take action. Uh, and in the future, I said, we wanna integrate this with reporting as well. So we can give you a little bit more context to the alert uh, and, 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 and you understand that better. So that's kind of a, the direction that um, we, we're heading. If you disagree, again, go to ideas. Please tell me that you don't like that. Tell me what you do like, and I'm going to, uh, uh, consider that uh, when we're doing the analysis for things like this. Perfect. That's great. Thank you. That's uh, pretty exciting to see like the process and the workflow that you can get from taking alert and then creating an action item off of it. That's really, I find that very exciting. That's the whole idea that we have. We want to be a bite-sized uh, uh, information that you can take actions on. So that's exactly. The, and also important to say that I forgot to mention we're integrating that with the uh, new uh, mobile <clears throat> application for SaaS that's going to receive the alerts there. And those actions are going to be also available on your mobile device. So basically on the go, you receive the alert, you get your mobile device and you take an action right there. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. That's exciting. Get excited, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. And 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 just to reiterate, like you said, um, if you if that wasn't the question, if if you're looking for something else, let us know. Um, if you like what he said, even just you can still enter it into ideas and just to kind of confirm everything that you know is going on as well. I think they like to hear that feedback as well. All right, so thank you for that. All right, so let's see let's see what's the next question here. Um, we've done that one. Um, you touched a little bit just about mobile, but is Click Alerting mobile app the same as the Click Sense mobile app? Uh, no. So we are actually creating this brand new Click Sense app. So it's not going to be a Click Alerting and Click Sense. It's going to be a consolidated mobile app for SaaS. Oh, perfect. So All the right. Click Alerting app remains the app for Windows. And together with the ClickSense mobile app for Windows, you can you can use on-premise uh, uh, environments. SaaS, we're going to have a consolidated single application for everything. Oh, great. Um, and so for this question, it, they're asking, do I need a ClickSense license to use Click Alerting? Uh, yeah, so click alerting is a value added product. It means that you need, it's a, it's a license attribute for your click alert, your click sense enterprise a license. Then, um, yeah, so that's, that's on windows. <clears throat> Basically you need a click sense enterprise license and then you need a add on license, which is the click alerting license on SAS alerting is a basic capability of the enterprise tier. So if you have a ClickSense Enterprise SaaS tenant, alerting is automatically available there for you. Uh, it's important to say here and clarify that alerting is not available on ClickSense business for SaaS, only on enterprise. Okay, perfect. I was just gonna ask that for my own clarification. <laughs> Great. All right, next question. Um, where are the alerting logs located? So let me get here. Uh, Nacho, you know that uh, top of your head? Yeah, that same program data click alerting. So um, program data normally is a hidden folder, but they can they can show hidden folders and it will be there. Okay. So there's a few services and each service uh, prints its own um, logs. Okay, great. 
Um, alerting is not showing up in my SAS tenant. Uh, how do I get alerting? So two things could be happening there. You could be on a business tenant that if that is the case, that's that's exactly how it works. So you don't you you you're not entitled of the alerting capabilities on the business tier. Uh, you have to uh, up, upgrade your your tenant to enterprise, and then you get the alerts. If you are on an enterprise SaaS tenant and you're not getting alerts, then please ask you to uh, log a support case uh, so we can investigate that. We did have some uh, some accounts with that problem uh, uh, when we launched this, but uh, by now I think we sold them all. But if there's any uh, remaining cases there, please let us know, and then we can we can fix that as soon as possible for you. Perfect. Just to add to that, there is a step to turn on the alerts in that QuickSense Enterprise on in SaaS area in the administration area. So the tenant admin would need to enable that for then users. But I think, Kaiki, that's on by default. Is that? That is on by default. And yeah, yeah. Thank you for actually uh, uh, reminding me of that. Yeah, that's also a, a setting on 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 the administration level that has to be on. So that could be that. As soon as this was on, somebody went there and turned that off. And that could be the reason you're not getting this. So that's the first thing to check if you are on an enterprise tenant. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so back to the APIs. Uh, our biggest concern with using the API, since it is not officially documented, is that Click could decom an, an API breaking whatever scripts we create to do this. Will removal of API calls be documented in the uh, service release notes in the future? Uh, yeah, so by default, whenever we take something out, we do that gradually. Like we give you a lot of time to fix it. Uh, and, and that's when we usually, instead of taking out, we create a new one and like the other one becomes obsolete after a, a while. But yeah, so that's the key. So, but uh, I think the first part is like, they, they have to be documented in the first place. And for click alerting on Windows or not, and we're in the process of just finalizing that for SAS. Yeah, being the person who writes the release notes anyway, I guess that's probably good. Uh, it, it's, an, it's a good point. I mean, it's a very valid point. Uh, obviously, we've released the product, we've made some changes, and we need to be mindful of you know people. We are those are public APIs. We may not have documented them yet publicly, but they are usable. And we obviously need to be mindful of changing those and any changes to them, making sure that's communicated. So that's a really good point. And I'm, I'll take that on board and make sure we try and cover that in the release notes as we go forward. Uh, as Kaiki yeah. says, obviously, as we document them more formally, there'll be more of a process around that and we'll have to keep them going in, pa you know, in parallel whilst we do some changes. But you know, whilst they're not, we'll need to be very careful with that. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, anyways, uh, we try to minimize those changes. And if we are making any changes or we are adding any new endpoints, uh, we normally maintain the original endpoint just in case you have it there. Or we try to, in general, yeah, just kind of minimize those changes by taking it to like um, kind of the, the black box. So your request is still the same even if we make any change. Perfect, that's great. You never know who we're, what kind of questions we're gonna get or who we're gonna have on the call. So you always wanna bring this kind of stuff up because like Richard said, he writes the release notes. So there you go. just yeah. had direct access to your release notes. <laughs> yeah, All now right. you know who to blame when it's not that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> His email is, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, all right, we have about 10 minutes left. So if you guys have any more questions, make sure you enter them in the Q&A panel and we will we'll get to those. Um, I think we still have a, a few more questions on the line, so we'll continue. Um, where can I find setup and configuration instructions for click alerting? Okay, so that is also available on the help page, which I am uh, going to actually just did, uh, put that in the chat for you. Um, the, um, there is a uh, section for installation uh, that if you follow that through, even I can install Click Alerting. So um, you should be able to uh, do it as well. Perfect. And I just uh, threw that up for everybody. So he did put the link uh, in the chat, but here you here you are. You can see the Click Alerting instructions here. On yeah, the and then you see on the side there, you still have like a few other areas like the prerequisites, the downloading and everything else. So make sure you go through all those sections. Uh, and it's a very 
well documented uh, by a very good person as well uh, that's on the call as well. <laughs> it's very kind, yes. <laughs> Um, do you want any I'll add to that. I mean, we do have lots of capability that we haven't documented, interestingly, that we've been careful not to confuse people with. Uh, we're working on making it simpler, realistically, both the install prerequisites and some of the config changes that you can make uh, to change some of the security settings, the ports, even the database locations, et cetera, that you can connect to to make it a bit easier to understand. So we're working through that. So in the February release, we will have you know, some newer documentation that will enable that. Uh, you know, make it easier for you to, if you need to, change some of the defaults that are there. Perfect, that's great. Um, kind of speaking of February, um, can you let us know what's to come? With uh, learning? Lots of it. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, so basically uh, we, we are, um, I cannot give you exact uh, what's coming because um, it's uh, we since the, the way we work here we we kind of uh, know uh, uh, when things are finding like almost like the last minute so it's not a surprise for me of course but I can just not fully share ex exactly what's coming so but uh, some things that I can tell and I did I mean uh, cover some of those which is a um, multi-step improvement to multi-step alerts uh, are coming in February. Uh, we also have uh, some work around uh, the history improvement in terms of using the history of evaluations for notifications. Uh, also a uh, uh, plan for February. And there's lots of like small fixes and, and things that uh, it, it bothers you, but not enough for you to ask a question that we're, we're looking at that and making sure that we're addressing this. So we're constantly monitoring um, how this is used, uh, monitoring feedback and monitoring uh, 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 ideas that we receive and, and it, it, we have a very exciting roadmap ahead of us. Great. Um, so kind of along the lines with that, um, I do, I have a question. <laughs> uh, yeah. Quick, quick, uh, quick alerting, does it have the same release schedule for uh, the on-prem? So ClickSense Enterprise, is it the same release schedule? Correct, yes. We do the, the five times a year uh, uh, releases, February, April, June, September, and November, okay. uh, aligned with the Clix, uh, Sense Enterprise. Perfect. And then for SaaS, I would imagine it's the monthly release cycle. Uh, well, yeah, it's like for major major features is monthly. For fixes and, and, and small improvements, uh, weekly, uh, like as soon as they're ready, uh, we just put them out there. Perfect. I'll just add for the February release on Windows, we have some incremental improvements on system alerts, which we've been doing just to make those much easier to kind of set and forget and, and be told when something's not right. So we have been doing a few things there. And then a lot of our work now is, is trying to make it, as one of the questions earlier was uh, around sort of a technical issue on upgrade, et cetera, uh, just resolving some of those small Bugs, uh, bug bears, not bugs, but just you know, annoyances really in the install and, and management process. And that's really the focus to try and make it as smooth as possible as we go forward. Great, perfect. All right, so um, if you guys have any more questions, like I said, use the uh, question in the Q&A panel below to get them answered. Even if um, we can't get to them right now because we are pretty close to time, um, we will get them answered and put them in the FAQ. Um, so as of right now, we have one last question. Um, I am receiving the following error with click alerting extension, could not retrieve user info. Check your extension settings or contact your administrator. Um, can you help with troubleshooting this? Yep. So there's um, in the health content, there's an area for troubleshooting. So probably that thing is, is covered. Um, most likely the problem is that the extension is not being able to connect with click alerting server. Um, and that may happen if, for example, the HTTPS is set up in ClickSense but not in, in Click Alerting. Um, so therefore, the browser itself is blocking that communication. It's not that Click Alerting is not responding, it's that Click Alerting is not being called to begin with. So for that error message specifically, that is likely the case. Um, other reason is, for example, if you're running um, 
locally or something like that. Like if the user is not matching exactly what your what click alerting has, then it's not going to pick it up, obviously. So it won't find that user that you're trying to use. And, and just one more thing, I think Nacho that um, a lot of people uh, don't understand this. So that the extension talks to click alerting directly. So from that moment, wherever uh, place you are in the network, you could be completely outside of the network, not connected to a VPN or something like that. So you need to make sure that your location of where you're accessing this in the browser can talk to, uh, to click alerts. And so the extension needs to be configured in a way. So for example, you could be using an, an, an address internally to make integration between click alerting and click sense. But if your browser is external, you need to make sure that you can access that. So the browser can call, call that. So that, that uh, I, I, I made that mistake as well. Uh, uh, when uh, we were evaluating ping alerting, I did exactly that. And, and, and I was bothering not to say, oh, help me fix this. <laughs> and so uh, that could be it as well. Yeah, that's this, a okay. point is easily raised that um, normally a good way is if you can reach click alerting from your browser, then probably the extension can re re reach it too. And that's the URL you should use. Yeah. Well, that's the that's a piece I want to just clarify as well. So if you happen to be able to access your click sent site through the IP or the DNS, the name server, but you've put the name server in in your sort of uh, alias host name on click alerting, that will act, that's a check. So that's a security check. So it's looking for the domain of the DNS realistically. So if you've got an IP, that's fine, but you have to access ClickSense with the IP. So you just have to make sure that piece matches because uh, that can cause trouble. If you're the, particularly if you're the developer or whatever, you might know the IP, most users wouldn't. So perhaps it works for users, but not for you. Then it's going to be because you're accessing, click, you're accessing ClickSense quite possibly with a different uh, URL, which is being passed across. Yeah, but anyways, all this is mentioned here in the troubleshooting. <laughs> Um, and in fact, for this case, um, with the syncing that um, DNS that you are using uh, with the one that you have um, in the sources area, in the admin area of click alerting, uh, that is actually a different error message. You would be getting something okay, yeah. a bit specific, but still, yeah, I mean, troubleshooting helps. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Always troubleshoot. <laughs> um, and just kind of a little bit about on that, um, too, it's, it's an like uh, Nacho said it here, you can take a look at the help. Um, you can also take a look at the support portal. Um, you can Google search uh, as well. So you can always just search the error message and then append click and you should get some results hitting either a click community or the support portal or help. So if you ever have an error message, just Google and uh, append click and uh, we probably have a lot of information about it. So if we don't, then you can let us know. All right, everyone, uh, we are at the top of the hour. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. We certainly do appreciate it. Um, I hope everyone found this hour helpful. If we, I think we got to all the questions live. Um, so they will be posted in the FAQ in the support knowledge uh, base. And I will do a blog on that as well. Um, and you can also look for the post in the Talk to Experts Tuesday support program section on the Click community. Um, so once again, you will be prompted or you should be prompted for a survey. Please take the time to fill that out. It should only take a minute. If you're not prompted and you want to give us your feedback, please email digital at click.com. And a huge thank you to Nacho, Richard, and Kaiki. Thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you soon. Everyone have a great day. Bye. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank, thank you. you.